Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how we release off a posterior cuff and posterior deltoid in people that have a painful shoulder or a painful arc. So when they raise their arm through abduction or flexion, there is pain going through the shoulder. Now with these people, a lot of the time when we get into the posterior cuff and the deltoid, if they've had this problem for a long period of time, there's a lot of really tight areas, especially through the teres minor, through from spinatus and the posterior delt, almost like a protection mechanism going on there because of the pain. Now, when we release that off, their movement improves and their pain drops down in a lot of cases. So that's sort of the first thing we're gonna go through. And the second thing we're gonna work on is joint mobilization to help the quality of the movement and help the brain release some of that guarding that's going on when you have a painful shoulder. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on the two rotator cuff, posterior rotator cuff at the back. So what I'm working on, if you can see, there's the edge of our infraspinatus going on there, okay? So we're gonna be working on this muscle group in here, okay? Now, you'll find these areas through this muscle that have trigger points or tight areas that are quite painful, and when you release them off, they feel better. Sometimes with some of these points, they could even feel pain through the front. So we'll go through some of that release. There's also your teres minor, which is coming sort of down around here, which assists that infraspinatus in external rotation. Now, the thing about these muscles, where you release these off, it's gonna help her external rotation power because the muscle functions better. Then when we progress into external rotation strength and getting these working with a rotator cuff, um, she improves a lot more. So it's really important to release it off if it's tight. Now, what I always find is the deltoid that's coming from the edge of that scapula into here, okay? So her deltoid, her posterior deltoid part is also really tight because it governs over where those infra and teres minor tendons are coming in, okay? So I also find that that posterior deltoid is often missed and often confused with the rotator cuff, but if you, you'll find that there's usually triggers in there, especially if something's long standing, that we can release off there as well. And that's all that posterior part of the joint. So if you release that off and then you stress that out, usually the movement improves quite well. Okay, so with posterior cuff release, now this is, you know, usually really relieving for a client to try and get all these little areas of tightness released off. And I can feel that already in Elise here. There's some spots through the back of the shoulder. And you can use this as a bit of, or we use this as a bit of a diagnostic as well. So when you obviously, you know, want to know what's going on with the shoulder, getting in there and releasing it off is part of the treatment, but it also gives you a bit of a diagnostic, okay, what is actually going on with that muscle in there? And you can find out exactly where all those triggers are. And sometimes you'll find that you get sort of a replication of some of that patient's pain, either going down their arm or into the front of the shoulder, which may give you an indication that some of that pain that they may be experiencing is referred. You feel okay with that, Elise? Now, down the bottom of that infraspinatus, I can already feel there's a real sort of tight area in there. It's sort of soft here, and then it gets sort of really hard. Now, that's not, you know, good tone. That's bad tone, if you like. That is really stiff. Where's that going, Elise? Front of my shoulder. Front of your shoulder. So she's getting a pain referral already. You can see that muscle flicking away there. That pain referral is very, very common. Now, if you imagine that muscle's that tight, what it's doing is sending pain to the shoulder, if you like, but also that'll make the brain guard it even more. And so when you've got a dysfunctional sort of muscle like that, it's not gonna be very good at strengthening up. So some people work on strengthening the muscle only, and that's great, but they only get so far if the muscle's really tight, it just doesn't get that full strength. So releasing it off like this, and this stuff we have to go pretty slow. We've gotta be careful of how much pressure you put through it. You don't wanna bruise that, but getting that nice release in there, over about a period of sort of 10, 15 minutes is a really good way of changing what is going on in the shoulder. So you're sort of dumbing down, if you like, what is happening from the shoulder to the brain. So you get rid of some of that guarding, rid of some of that sort of muscle hypertonicity that's going on. And then when you go through some strengthening work and some mobility work through the shoulder, the whole thing functions better. And that helps with that sort of path of getting rid of the, any painful arc or impingement type syndromes that are going through the shoulder. So that infraspinatus one we can start working on. The teres minor one is sometimes a little bit harder. You'll find it feels like a bit of a ropey muscle there. You can sort of see it going on there. And sometimes it's a bit confusing because you're going over the edge of the scapula at that point as well. And that part is 
quite hard, quite tricky, because you've got to get sort of, the deltoids right there, so you get sort of underneath that and try and find out where that is. Now, if you've got strong thumbs, like I have, it's pretty easy for me to do. Other people have to sort of put two together. And the reason we do that as well is also stand it so you don't flick off. But that's sort of point there. At least, what's happening with that one? Bit sore, so it's just going a little bit upwards. Okay, and again, that one, when you're looking for this, you're sometimes looking for where that muscle's flicking away. Are you on the right track with that? And again, that one won't be as much usually. You won't find as much, in some cases you do, but as much as the infraspinae as far as how tight that goes. And once that's all released off, then I come into the deltoid. Now this one's a really interesting one. Some people's deltoids are so tight and rock hard there that it does extend down sometimes in the tricep. I find people who have, um, have had chronic frozen shoulder or if they've had a rotator cuff tear for a long period of time, they've had some maybe some inflammation that's ongoing in the shoulder, maybe some bursitis that's going on in the shoulder that's sort of mild but chronic. This whole system down here has been compensating. Okay, so try and get their arm up, try and move their arm. If they're getting weakness through the cuff because of the pain, everything's shutting down. The body then has to go, well, what's next? I'll have to use your deltoid, I'll have to use your tricep to try and do the job of the shoulder. And the deltoid, the rear deltoid can help work a little bit. Um, it can help sort of be a fake rotator cuff if you like. But what that does is it makes it really stiff and tight in there. So if you can release that off, and this will be a good pain if you like. You've got to be careful with some of these. Sometimes these can turn into a bit of a bad pain if they're really, really sensitive. But I find a lot of the deltoid release through here is a good pain. And if you can release that off, you just allow more natural movement through the shoulder, more range, you can feel that flickering away there. Um, and that will just give her enough release to then, like I said, get some mobility going and get that whole shoulder stronger. Now if I go down, I'm just gonna investigate that. If I just go down into the shoulder, into the tricep here, there's not too much going on here. Some people it goes right down, there's a whole band that goes almost right down into their tricep tendon there. But that's actually, she's not too bad today with that. So I'd work on that quite a bit, getting right in underneath that back of the scapula there and right around. You don't have to worry too much about the middle delta. I do find it's mostly the posterior delta when you've got these sort of problems is the issue and trying to get that nicely released off. If the person's really hypermobile, getting a towel under here will be quite helpful because then it raises everything up. So you can also do that as well to get that stuck. And if she's sort of really diving in there, getting a towel under there to try and lift that up so you can get sort of more into the muscle if you like without hitting the joint too much. So that would be her muscle release. Now let's work on some joint mobs.